evening. This is the online lesson that was taught at three PM to four twenty. It was on carbon and its compounds. Uh, the topic of the lesson was solvay process. And solvay process was tested in KCC 20, 2000, paper 1, question 3. And it was also tested in KCC 2018, paper 2, question 6. The solvay process, when we are learning solvay process, there are the key areas where you are supposed to emphasize. There are the key areas, the areas that are highly tested. Um, when we talk about solvay process, you, do, you should know these, the raw materials. You should know the four raw materials. There are four. Then you should know the sources of the raw materials, the names of the chambers. You should be able to write balanced chemical equations for the reactions that take place in every chamber. And you should also be able to name the materials that are recycled in the process. In addition to this, we are supposed to know why the survey plant is located near a river or a water source. You should also be able to state the uses of calcium chloride, which is the byproduct in the survey process. You should also be able to state the uses of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is the inamented product during the survey process. And lastly, you should be able to state the uses of the main product in the survey process, which is the sodium carbonate. Remember, survey process is a large scale manufacture of sodium carbonate. Now, the survey process, this one is the large scale manufacture of sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate, remember, it can be uh, obtained from trona, and in some areas, trona is not available. So in places where trona is not available, sodium carbonate and sodium hydrogen carbonate are manufactured by the solvay process. And during this process, we use the raw materials such as brine, which is the concentrated sodium chloride, limestone, which is calcium carbonate, and ammonia gas, and also water. Now, where we are using the limestone, uh, we can also use cork. Cork is in pure carbon. The limestone or cork, they are used to generate carbon four oxide gas. Can we see the sources of these four raw materials? The four raw materials we are saying they are brine, limestone, ammonia, and water. The brine. Brine is obtained from sea water. Brine is concentrated sodium chloride solution and we obtain it from sea 
water, the limestone, which is calcium carbonate, is obtained from limestone rocks. So the limestone, which is solid, uh, solid calcium carbonate, is obtained from limestone rocks. Then, remember I've told you where we have limestone, we can also use cork. Limestone is heated to produce carbon dioxide. Or you can use cork. Uh, when you burn cork, it forms carbon dioxide. Remember, cork is just carbon. Then the other so, uh, raw material is ammonia. Ammonia is obtained from harbor process. And the last uh, raw material is water. Water is obtained from a river, lake, or sea. So, in short, the four raw materials and their sources include rain from seawater, limestone from limestone rocks, and ammonia from upper process, water from river, lake, or sea. Let me take you through the flowchart of the Solvay process. In the Solvay process, we start with brine. Brine is just concentrated sodium chloride. And concentrated sodium chloride solution means that it is sodium chloride that is dissolved in water. So this is a mixture of sodium chloride and water. So in brine, we have sodium chloride and water. The brine is taken to absorption chamber, whereby ammonia is dissolved in the brine. Ammonia is mixed with brine in a fast absorption chamber. And in this chamber, when a brine reacts with ammonia, they form ammoniated brine. So brine, when mixed with ammonia, they form ammoniated brine. And this is the first absorption chamber. Now, if you look at our raw materials, we had four raw materials. Now we have used three. We have used sodium, chloride, water, and ammonia form ammoniated brine. All the raw material which you have not touched is limestone. So the limestone is taken to the limestone kiln to generate carbon dioxide. And in the lime kiln, uh, the limestone, which is calcium carbonate, is heated until it decomposes to form carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. Remember, we also said that every reaction that takes place, we must know how to write the balanced chemical equation. And a correct chemical equation must have eight symbols and it must be well balanced. This one is well balanced. Calcium is one both sides. Carbon is one both sides. And oxygen, there are three both sides. But the equation is not having state symbols. So here, rewrite the, when you are writing the flowchart, you put that here it is a solid, and then this is a solid. Calcium, uh, calcium carbonate is a solid. Calcium oxide is a solid. And carbon dioxide is a gas. Remember to put those state symbols. So we have generated carbon oxide from lime kiln. Limestone has been heated in the lime kiln to form calcium oxide and carbon oxide. The carbon oxide and the three other uh, the three raw materials that we had combined to form the ammoniated brine, which were the ammonia, sodium chloride, and water. All these they are reacted in a chamber we call the 
solving tower or the carbonating tower, the carbonator. Now, in the carbonator, we have four reagents that are reacting. Four reagents just like the four raw materials. The only difference is that um, instead of using limestone here in the, lim in the carbonating tower, we are using carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is not a raw material. But look at all these other reagents. They are the raw materials. So the limestone has been heated to decompose to form carbon dioxide. And then the four, the four reagents are just like the four raw materials. So we have sodium chloride, which was a raw material, ammonia, which was the raw material, then carbon dioxide from the raw material we called limestone, and water, which was also a raw material. So the four of them, they are combining to form two products, sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is a solid, and ammonium chloride is a solution. Now, this is a mixture of an insoluble salt, that is the sodium hydrogen carbonate, and the soluble salt, which is the ammonium chloride solution. Now, how do we separate this mixture of an insoluble substance with a soluble substance? You can only uh, you can carry out the process we call filtration. If you take this mixture through a filter, then the ammonium chloride here will separate out as a filtrate. So we have ammonium chloride, which is a solution. Now the, in, in this step, it is a filtrate. It has separated out as a filtrate. Then the sodium hydrogen carbonate separates out as the residue is left as a residue. So this sodium hydrogen carbonate is an intermediate product here because the, in the solvate process, we are manufacturing sodium carbonate. So how do we get sodium carbonate from sodium hydrogen carbonate? We heat. And this sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated in a chamber <laughs> that we call a roster. So we have a roster here. We take it to the roster whereby it is heated. The sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated and it decomposes to form sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. So here uh, we have formed the sodium carbonate, which is the end product in the solvent process. Apart from the, so the product, which is sodium carbonate, we have formed carbon four oxide and water. Are we going to throw these two? Because the, the, we are, they are not the ones we are manufacturing? No, we cannot throw them. The reason being, the reaction in the carbonator requires carbon dioxide. It requires water. So it means this carbon dioxide and water that has been formed in the roster, they are needed in the carbonator. So we are going to recycle carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide and water are recycled. The carbon dioxide and water that are formed here are recycled. Now, um, remember, we have formed ammonium chloride here, and we cannot throw it. This is a very economical process. We don't throw anything here. This ammonium chloride that we have formed here, we learned during laboratory preparation of ammonia that Ammonium chloride can be reacted with a suitable alkali like uh, the calcium oxide to give us ammonia gas. So, 
ammonia gas is going to be recovered using this ammonium chloride. And our, where are we going to get calcium hydroxide from? Back to our lime kiln. In the lime kiln, we formed calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. We used the carbon dioxide, but we did not use the calcium oxide. The calcium oxide is going to be used to generate calcium hydroxide, which will react with ammonium chloride to give us the ammonia. So how do we get calcium hydroxide from calcium oxide? We slake. We take this calcium oxide to a chamber that we call lime slaker. In the lime slaker, we mix, we mix this calcium oxide with water. Now, when calcium oxide is mixed with water, uh, the following reaction takes place. Calcium oxide reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide. And remember, we said we must know how to write a balanced chemical equation for every reaction that takes place in every chamber. Like, for example, in the slime slaker, we have calcium oxide reacting with water to form calcium hydroxide and a balanced chemical equation uh, must be used. Then, a correct chemical equation must have state symbols. So, this word here. It's not a correct one. It is lacking chemical uh, the state symbols. So you, when you are writing this equation, rewrite by adding when add while adding the state symbols like for calcium uh, oxide here you put S to bracket S. Then where we have water you put into brackets. L. And where we have calcium hydroxide you put into brackets. RPS because this one is a solution. Now, the calcium hydroxide that has been formed here, it is taken to another chamber, the chamber that we are going to recover ammonia, we want to regenerate ammonia. And what is the name of this chamber? A chamber that we are going to recover ammonia. This is ammonia recovery. The ammonia recovery, calcium hydroxide and ammonia are react uh, on ammonium chloride. Calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride are reacted to form calcium chloride, water, and ammonia. And again, remember what I told you. In every chamber, any reaction that is taking place, you must know how to write how balanced chemical equation so this is the balanced chemical equation but the state symbols you must indicate if you don't indicate the state symbols for this element of these compounds here then you are not going to get full marks for this uh, for the chemical equation so what do we do this calcium hydroxide is a solution we put aqueous aq here then this uh, ammonium chloride is also a solution, so it's aqueous. You put a Q to bracket a Q. The calcium chloride is also aqueous. You put a Q. Water is a liquid. You put into brackets L. And ammonia is a gas. You put into brackets G. Now we have formed three products here in ammonia recovery. We wanted to regenerate ammonia. Ammonia was our interest. But we have formed calcium chloride and water. Then the ammonia. Are we going to throw calcium chloride and water? No. Back to the... Uh, where we have brine, we, we have water. Where we have the carbonating tower, water. So water is... Um, is needed in this process so we cannot throw the water that has been formed here because it is needed in the carbonator so what do we do we recycle the water so water 
and ammonia from this chamber just like the water and carbon dioxide from the roster. They are going to be recycled. Water, ammonia, from ammonia recovery. And carbon dioxide and water from the roster. All these materials are recycled. In total, there are three. Carbon dioxide, water, and ammonia. So the materials that are recycled during this process are three. We have water, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. Then the calcium chloride that has been formed here, it cannot be recycled. So this one is a byproduct. So the calcium chloride becomes the byproduct. Then the ammonia and water are recycled. So we have ammonia and water being recycled. Then, uh, remember we said from the roster we recycle carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide and water are recycled. In the ammonia recovery, we recycled ammonia and water. From the roster we have recycled carbon dioxide and water. So in total we have how many substances that are that have been re uh, recycled? Three ammonia, carbon dioxide and water. <laughs> now that is the flow chart. During this process, remember we said started with brine. Brine was mixed with ammonia to give us ammoniated brine. And the three raw materials had been used. Only one was remaining, and that was limestone. So the limestone, we could not use it in the carbonator. We had to heat for it to decompose in the lime kiln to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is the one that now we reacted with the three other raw materials to form the sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride. And this reaction here in the carbonator takes place in two steps that we are going to see. The first step, the carbon dioxide, water and ammonia will combine to form ammonium carbonate. And the ammonium carbonate that is formed will be reacted with the brine, which is the, the, the sodium chloride, to give us the sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride. Now, the calcium oxide from this uh, lime kiln was reacted with uh, calcium, uh, was reacted with water to give us calcium hydroxide that we used it in the ammonia recovery. Now, the products of the carbonator were separated through filtration by the ammonium chloride, which is the solution, uh, became the filtrate and the sodium hydrogen carbonate became the residue and the residue was heated in a roaster where it decomposed to form sodium carbonate and oxide and water. The sodium carbonate was the product. Now in the ammonia recovery, uh, calcium hydroxide was reacted with ammonium chloride to form calcium chloride, water and ammonia. Then the calcium chloride became the byproduct Water and ammonia are recycled. Now, the raw materials that are used in this process are readily available and cheap. These materials are readily available and cheap. Which materials are we talking about? Ammonia, limestone, carbon dioxide, uh, not carbon dioxide, we have, we have ammonia, um, limestone, uh, brine, and water. Now, the ammonia is absorbed in the 
first absorption chamber it is reacted it is mixed with brine in that chamber to give us the ammonical brine so when ammonia gas is mixed with brine it forms ammonical brine so in any chamber whereby you are just seeing brine being put into the chamber and ammonia you just combine the two names to form the product of that chamber which is ammonia or brine see most students here they will just struggle to know uh, to, to to give the name in giving the name is struggle but the name is so simple in if you see any chamber it's always a process whereby the, we are putting in brine and we are putting in ammonia and you are told to name the core substance that comes out of that chamber or you are told to name that chamber it's so simple you just combine the name of ammonia and brine ammonia brine that is what happens in the first absorption chamber the ammonia is mixed with brine to form ammonia brine or the ammoniated brine now the other chamber was lime kiln and in the lime kiln calcium carbonate which is the limestone is heated in the kiln and it decomposes to form carbon dioxide and calcium oxide so calcium oxide is formed from calcium carbonate how the calcium carbonate when we are learning the effects of heat on carbonate we said that apart from this uh, uh, the group 1 but of carbonate the others that are below uh, sodium in the reactive series they will decompose on heat to form metal oxide and carbon dioxide apart from ones that are very low in the reactivity series so these ones we have uh, calcium carbonate it decomposes to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so now um, the carbon dioxide that has been formed in the kiln is pumped into cell the solvent tower and the solvent tower i told you that it is also called the carbonator and it is pumped there while the ammonia brine and water the three i told you they we, we call them ammonia brine where by now the ammonia brine will trickle from the top it's coming from the other, the first absorption chamber then we have carbon dioxide from the lime kiln these two they are going to mix the ammonia brine and the carbon dioxide they are going to mix in the carbonator and when they mix in the into the carbonator now we have a total of four substances the four substances that are going to react here are ammonia carbon dioxide brine that is sodium chloride and water the four they will react to give us two product and the reaction is highly exothermic so the reaction that takes place is highly exothermic and exothermic means that it produces a lot of heat and therefore it has to be cooled by water and this is one of the reason the solvay tower the solvay plant it has to be located near a river to cool this reaction to cool that chamber because the reaction that takes place there is highly exothermic so uh, another reason why this plant needs to be located near water a uh, water source is because water is one of the raw materials so we have two reasons here water is a raw material and water is required to cool the this chamber where the reaction is highly exothermic so this plant needs to be located near 
a source of water. Now, the reaction is highly exothermic and it occurs. Remember, we are in the carbonator. The reaction occurs in two steps. There are several steps. So we have the first step whereby ammonia ammonia will combine with uh, carbon dioxide and water to form ammonium hydrogen carbonate. So several reactions take place in the survey tower. The ammonia carbon dioxide and water they combine to form ammonium hydrogen carbonate and this is the first step the ammonium hydrogen carbonate that has been formed here will now react with the fourth remember i told you the reaction in the in the carbonator it is having four uh, four reactants like we had four raw materials so here if we go back to our raw materials the only raw material that has not been used is which one? We have ammonia has been used. Limestone has been used to generate carbon dioxide that is here. This carbon dioxide is coming from limestone. So we have used ammonia, we have used limestone. Then water has been used. So the only raw material that has not been used here is sodium chloride, the brine. So now how, how do we use it? We react this sodium chloride with ammonium hydrogen carbonate so the ammonium hydrogen carbonate that is formed in step one is reacted with sodium chloride to give us ammonium chloride and um, uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate now these two equations can be combined to give us the overall reaction now the overall reaction when you combine these two equations is having four reactants the ammonia reacting with carbon dioxide and sodium chloride and water to give us ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate remember you must know how to, buy, uh, to write uh, all these equations now ammonia is reacting with carbon dioxide and sodium chloride and water to form ammonium uh, chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. This ammonium chloride is a solution and sodium hydrogen carbonate is a solid. How do we separate the two? The sodium hydrogen carbonate being less soluble than ammonium chloride at low temperatures forms crystals at the carbonator and the two products now the ammonium chloride and the sodium hydrogen carbonate those two products are separated through filtration so the two products are thus separated by filtering. Remember, we have filtered, we have filtered and obtained ammonium chloride as the filtrate and the sodium hydrogen carbonate as the residue. So what do we to do to the residue? The residue is taken to a rose tank. The residue which is the sodium hydrogen carbonate is taken to a roaster whereby it is heated and when it is heated it decomposes to form sodium carbonate water and carbon four oxide remember you must know how to write a balanced chemical equation for that reaction whereby sodium hydrogen carbonate is decomposing on heat to form sodium carbonate and carbon four oxide and water then we have formed our final product during the solvay pro uh, process here but 
we cannot throw this water we cannot throw this carbon dioxide we just recycle them and the ammonium chloride that we formed uh, is reacted with an alkali to regenerate ammonia so this alkali where are we going to get it from the alkali that is used here is calcium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide is obtained by mixing calcium oxide from kiln with water and the process of mixing calcium oxide with water is called slaking so the calcium oxide from the kiln is slaked with water at the slaker lime slaker to form lime water lime water is calcium hydroxide solution now this reaction must not violate balanced chemical equations calcium oxide is reacting with water to form calcium hydroxide and the calcium hydroxide that has been formed here it is uh, heated with ammonium chloride so the calcium oxide solution is heated with uh, the ammonium chloride which we obtain from the carbonator so when ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide are heated they form ammonia gas and calcium chloride and water now when ammonia gas and calcium uh, chloride and water have been formed again we must know how to write the balanced chemical equation for this reaction how do we write the balanced chemical equation it is so simple calcium hydroxide remember we, this is the same equation which we wrote when we were preparing among the lab that calcium hydroxide reacts with ammonium chloride to form calcium chloride ammonia and water i repeat calcium hydroxide reacts with ammonium chloride to form uh, calcium chloride ammonia and water then this ammonia and water are recycled the calcium chloride cannot be recycled this one but we don't throw it it's a very uh, useful uh, compound so it's the byproduct but it is still useful in, um, in our daily to day life so we are going to see the uses of calcium chloride so uh, the survey process is a very efficient industrial process because because most byproducts are recycled thus reducing pollution how are these materials recycled and which are these materials that are recycled you remember we have said we recycle ammonia this ammonia here the water here and then from the roster we said we recycle water and carbon dioxide so we have three substances that are recycled ammonia which is regenerated from calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride it is recycled then carbon dioxide from the roster is pumped into the solvay tower too so that one is also recycled water which is produced in several processes we have said water has been produced during ammonia recovery and it was also produced in the roster so this one it is also uh, recycled uh, to reduce the need of water near the um, so we find that uh, uh, the water produced in the several processes is used to cool the solvay tower thus reducing um, the need for water near the plant 
spend large quantities of water are needed. So the location of such a plant, however, requires large quantity of water and proximity to other raw materials. Now, this means that this plant cannot be located far away from uh, water sources. So, it is, can be located near the river. For what reason? So, large quantities of water are required because, number one, water is a raw material. So, we need to locate it near the water source because water is a raw material in this process. Then, the other reason why uh, this plant needs to be located near a water source is that uh, the reaction that takes place there in the carbonator uh, produces a lot of heat and hence water is needed for cooling. You know, this temple needs to be cooled because there is a lot of heat being produced. So the reaction produces a lot of heat and hence uh, water is needed for cooling. Now, um, we have seen the various states, the various chambers. Okay? We can name the chambers that were we, we have meant in the survey process. We have meant chambers like the, 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 the first absorption chamber whereby we formed the ammoniated lime. We, we meant a chamber like the kiln, lime kiln, lime selector, the carbonator, the roaster, the filter, okay? the ammonia recovery. All those chambers. We also say that we need to know the uses of each of the product that is formed during this survey process. Now, we start. We can start uh, to see the by seeing the uses of calcium chloride that has been formed. The byproduct, the calcium chloride formed, is used to melt snow on roads during winter and it is also used during the extraction of sodium metal to lower the melting point of sodium chloride. Now, the other compound that was formed during this process was sodium carbonate. The sodium carbonate is used in softening of hard water. It is also used in manufacture of glass. It is also used in manufacture of detergents. And it is also used in the manufacture of paper. The other compound that we, uh, we saw during this process was the intermediate product, which was the sodium hydrogen carbonate. And the sodium hydrogen carbonate, how is it useful in our day-to-day -day life? This sodium hydrogen carbonate is used in making health drinks. It is also used as a baking powder. So, in short, need to know these areas, the raw materials, the sources of the raw materials, the names of the chambers, the balanced chemical coefficients for the reaction that take place in every chamber, and the materials that are recycled during that process. We also need to know the, uh, the way, the, the, the reasons why the plant is located near a river, and the uses of calcium chloride, sodium hydrogen carbonate, and sodium carbonate. So that brings us to the end of the survey process. Now we can go into, we can have a sh short session of question and answer revision.
where we are going to answer several questions from different uh, sources from first papers question and answer edition the reaction scheme you know, shows sodium uh, shows the manufacture of sodium carbonate by solving process study it and i use it to answer the question that follow write the question down the scheme below shows the manufacture of sodium carbonate by the solving process study it and use it to answer the questions that follow uh, this is the flowchart it is the scheme we have the sodium uh, chloride the brine and the brine um, that you know we have sodium chloride that has been mixed with with the with ammonia here in the water to give us the ammonico brine so the ammonico brine has been formed when gas b when gas b was mixed with brine from this point here we have gas b when mixed with brine it's forming ammonico brine and then in this heating tower here we are heating limestone and it is decomposing to form gas a so limestone when heated calcium carbon when heated it forms gas a so what is gas a gas a is likely to be carbon dioxide so when you are studying this flow chart can be able to identify such gases and then we just write somewhere and we just write below it that is a co2 because you, are, you can see it's been formed from the limestone so it is taken to solvate tower p so the solvate tower the carbon intact eh? so this gas is carbon dioxide mm? whereby we are putting in the ammonico brine we are mixing it with carbon dioxide now uh, the product here from tower p it has been taken to filter so uh, correct this spellings for this part here is not filler it's supposed to be filter correct that filter this is a filter the process is filtration so um now when these products from tower p is taken to the filter this one is a filter correct filter this one is supposed to be t so this is a filter uh, when this uh, uh, is taken when these uh, uh, products of tower p are taken to the filter they separate into two substances we have solution c and solid so what is solution C from the filter? We only have one chamber where we have filter in the solvate process. So if you, you just go back to our the previous flow, uh, uh, flow chart on solvate process, here you see where we have the filter, then we have two substances, then we'll be able to know which one is the solution, which one is the solid. So the solution was ammonium chloride. So right here, right in your exercise that this solution is the one that was the other flow chart. This solution is ammonium chloride. Then this one is the solid the residue. We said it is sodium hydrogen carbonate. And the sodium hydrogen carbonate was being heated in a chamber. The chamber we called roaster. So in chamber Q, this is a roaster. This roasting taking place. So when you heat in the roaster, when you heat, you get when you heat the sodium hydrogen carbonate, you get sodium carbonate. Now, from the filter, in the previous flowchart, we said the solution from the filter is taken to ammonia recovery. So, in this chamber R, this one is likely to be ammonia recovery because we are taking the uh, ammonium chloride. And ammonium chloride is only used in ammonia recovery. 
So chamber R is, is more likely to be uh, ammonia recovery because now again you look on the other side we have gas B which is forming ammoniated brine when mixed with brine. So this is ammonia. So chamber R is ammonia recovery. We are getting gas B which is ammonia. And now the tower P. In the tower P we have limestone. So why are we adding water here? Because when we heat limestone, we get calcium oxide. And the calcium oxide, when added water, when slaked with water, it forms calcium hydroxide, which is required in chamber R, ammonia recovery. Now we can go to the questions and see. I hope you've been noting the identity of such substances when we are studying. And so what I have done now is what we call studying. So when you see the flowchart, don't rush to the questions first. Try to read the flowchart and understand it. If you just read and understand, you are studying the flowchart first, and then you can go to the questions. Now let's go to the questions. Question one. A. Name Roman one gases A and B. So we said gas B is coming from ammonia recovery, so gas B is ammonia. Then gas A is coming from eating limestone, from the lime kiln. So gas A is carbon four oxide. So gas A is carbon four oxide because it's coming from the lime kiln, from the composition of limestone. Then gas B is coming from ammonia recovery, and that should be ammonia gas. Because again, when the gas B is mixed with it, it mixed with brine is forming ammoniated brine. So it's only ammonia that can it's only ammonia, which is a gas that can be mixed with brine to give us ammoniated ammoniated brine. You can see it is forming ammonic or brine. So that is ammonia gas. The next question. Name solution C and solid B. So solution C, uh, we said solution C is, it's coming from filter. So, so where we have the filter, we only have two things. We had uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate, which was the residue, and ammonium chloride, which was the filtrate. So solution C is the filtrate, which is ammonium chloride solution. Then solid D is the residue, which was sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now, um, the other question is number uh, C. Write the equations for the reactions taking place in tower P and chamber R. Remember, I told you, you have to understand you must know how to write the balance scheme coefficient for every reaction that takes place in every chamber so now we are being asked to write the equations for the reactions taking place in chamber p in, in tower p and chamber r so in tower p tower p we have the ammonium hydrogen carbonate reacting with sodium chloride to form sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride. Now, uh, in the tower P, which is the carbonator, you can also write the four, four, uh, four. The reactants you can use ammonia, ammonia. You can either write the first equation or this other one. Ammonia reacting with which is no, it's a gas reacting with um water. Remember the four raw materials reacting with water. And also, um, the other one was uh, 
sodium chloride. So we also reacting reacting with sodium chloride. Appears. Also reacting with um, carbon dioxide. Form sodium hydrogen carbonate. To form sodium. Sodium, hydrogen, carbonate, remember this is a carbon oxide here, CO2, gas, this is a gas, then uh, this one is sodium hydrogen carbonate, it's a, it's a solid, then Ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride. This C must be a, a capital letter. You you write a capital. That's why I write my C. <laughs> capital letter. So, but the L must be a letter. So this ammonium chloride and it is a solution aqueous. So the equation is balanced. So you can you can write either this this equation, the second one, or you can just write the full equation, the general equation, the one that is having the four the reactants forming the two uh, wrong uh, the two products. No. Um, the other chem uh, chamber is chamber R. Chamber R. Remember we said it is ammonia recovery, and in the ammonia recovery. We reacted calcium hydroxide and ammonia to form calcium chloride, ammonia, and water. So calcium hydroxide reacts with ammonium chloride to form calcium chloride, ammonia, and water. So that is the reaction that takes place in chamber R. The next question is. Um, name the product formed in that chamber R, chamber R, and give its use. So in chamber R, um, we prepare the, the, the main reason for having chamber R, the main purpose of chamber R is to recover ammonia gas. And during the process, we also form calcium chloride as a byproduct. And water. So the ammonia gas, which is the main product in the ammonia recovery, it is used in the manufacture of fertilizers. Remember, we learned ammonia, the uses of ammonia when we were learning ammonia. So ammonia is used in the manufacture of fertilizers, it is used as a refrigerant, it is used in the manufacture of nitric 5 acid. It is used as a, as a refrigerant. It is used in softening of hard water. And the other product in this chamber are in the ammonia recovery is calcium chloride, which is used as a drying agent. It is also used to melt snow and road. And it is also used in the extraction of sodium metal. Those are the uses of the products that are formed in chamber R. The last question is state two uses of sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is the, now the main product in the, the final product in the soil process. So it is used in one, making of glass, number two, softening of hard water, number three, making sodium silicate, which is used in making detergents.
So this one is used in making detergents. And lastly, it is used in paper industry. Okay. Another question. Diagram below shows the main stages of the solving process. This one is carbon dioxide. Example, we have carbon dioxide and we have uh, water. Okay. So we add carbon dioxide here, water here, brine. We have brine that is mixed with substance A. So what is substance A? Now we go back to our raw materials. Go back to our raw materials. Then substance A. So we go back to our raw materials. We go to the diagram below shows the main stages of the solving process. Carbon dioxide and water in step one. They are added to the substance A, which has been added to brine. So brine is mixed with substance A. And then we had carbon dioxide and water. So what is this? Step two, we can see we have ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. The arrow is, is forming two arrows. So it means that the products in this chamber here have been separated. So in step two, they have been separated. And the sodium hydrogen carbonate is, um, uh, is, is forming sodium carbonate. How is this possible? It's only possible through heating and composing. Okay? Heating the sodium car hydrogen carbonate to form the sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide. So uh, the substance A here is ammonia. And we are told, write the equation for the reaction the equation for the reaction that takes place in write the equation for the reaction that takes place in step three. Okay, in step three, what is happening? Sodium hydrogen carbonate is decomposing to form sodium carbonate. So this one is uh, it occurs in the raw state. The sodium hydrogen carbonate decomposing to form sodium carbonate. So uh, this reaction, the sodium carbonate, uh, hydrogen carbonate, decomposes to form decomposes to form sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. Sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. So that is the equation of the reaction that is produced in uh, that uh, particular chamber. Now. Name the process taking place in step two. So in step two, you can see what is happening that uh, we are separating ammonium chloride and, and uh, we are separating ammonium chloride here and sodium hydrogen carbonate. And this process of separating the sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride, we say it is called filtration, which is called Filtration. So this one is called filtration. No. Assignment. Assignment number one. Study the flow chart below and say for the manufacture of sodium hydrogen carbonate. And study it and answer the question part four. You know, this exam was done by our home tools. The end term. And I'm going to give you form 3 as an assignment here. Uh, now, <coughs> we had this uh, solving tower Z. Remember, this arrow is continuous. This arrow is continuous, continuous, continuous. It's continuous from, it's continuous. To start here, this one is this one is our straight line, straight 
this time then it comes here at this point it branches no it is what this is what that is what it comes this way so this is the same water what are running from here this The first question, name gases, X and Y. The second question, identify solution G and filtrate N. Identify solution G and filtrate N. Question three. Write the chemical equation for the reaction in chamber R. Number two, chamber one. Next question. The survey tower should be situated near a large water source. Give two reasons. The survey tower should be situated near a large water source. Give two reasons. Number four, five. Give two substances that are recycled. Give two substances that are recycled. Number six. Give one use of sodium carbonate sodium carbonate and the byproduct so you are going to give one use of the sodium carbonate as a byproduct next question name the process taking place in chamber T Name the process taking place in chamber D. Another question. Write down the equations for the two reactions that occur in the Solvay tower. Write equations for the two reactions that occur in the Solvay tower. Assignment two. Uh, you are going to um, copy the question that was tested on KCC twenty eighteen, the part one, question two, number six, and you want to write your notes. Uh, 
um, those who don't have the KCC past paper, you can get it online. You can just Google KCC 2018 Chemistry Paper 2 Attica School to access free KCC past papers. So you go and select KCC Paper 2, you answer question C. Oh, there are so many uh, free sites where you can get free resources. Do not pay, just go to the free site and download the KCC paper and then you do it. You can get from Attica, you can get from Advanced Africa free papers. And that brings us to the end of our today's lesson. Lesson that was done at 3 p.m. to 4.20 p.m. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And let us meet tomorrow in the next uh, lesson. Good night.